By the end of this video, you'll know how to create simple plastic parts in Fusion 360's Sculpt environment. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. To get started, I'm going to create a new component. I'll select the Assemble drop-down list and then select New Component. Before clicking the OK button, I'll make sure Empty Component is selected and I'll type out Plastic Cover for the component name. Now to get to the Sculpt environment, you'll see that you can't select it from the Workspace drop-down list. But instead, you have to select Create Form from the Create drop-down list or from the toolbar. This will give you a warning that you're entering the Sculpt environment. And if you don't want to see this message again, you can simply check this box before clicking OK. For this demo, I'm going to show you how to sculpt a simple plastic cover that is used for a doorbell chime box. And for reference purposes, I'll put a link to a similar product in the video description down below. Then, after sculpting out the basic shape, we'll convert the T-spline body to a solid model, and we'll take a look at how to add some ribs and webs to the plastic part. I'm going to start out with a simple box. I'll select the box option in the toolbar, then I'll select the XY origin plane. I'm going to select the center origin and drag out with my mouse, which will give me the option to type out the length and the width of the box. For the length, I'll type out 245 millimeters, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place, so it doesn't change when I move my mouse around. Then, for the width, I'll type out 152 millimeters, also followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And both of these dimensions were from measuring the product that I linked to. After entering the width of the box, you'll see that we're able to define the height of the box. For the height, I'll type out 50 millimeters. Before clicking Enter, let's take a look at the options in the box dialog. You'll see that within the box dialog, we're able to redefine the length, width, or height of the box before clicking OK. We're also able to set the number of T-spline faces for all three dimensions. Now one important thing to note when sculpting is that you'll want to make sure your visual style is not set to the shaded option. If I head down to the visual style settings and select the shaded option, you'll see that you can't see all the T-spline faces. Personally, I like to use the visual style option that is shaded with visible edges only, which makes it really easy to see the T-spline edges. The general rule with sculpting faces is to always start with the fewest amount that you think you'll need. It's always easier to add faces and edges as you're sculpting versus starting with too many faces, which can make your sculpted body harder to control. To start off this body, I want to have a few faces on each side. I'll type out three faces for the length, four faces for the width, and two faces for the height. And I'm putting the most amount of faces for the width because that's the area that I'm going to manipulate the most. The next option in the dialog box is the direction. It defaults to one side, which is what I'll use. However, just note that you have the option of selecting symmetric, which will essentially double your height and make the box dimensions go in both directions. Next in the dialog box, you'll see the symmetry option. The symmetry option can be very helpful when sculpting objects, ensuring that both sides are symmetrical. You can turn symmetry on and off at any time while sculpting. However, I'm going to turn this symmetry on now, and I'll check the width symmetry. And you'll see the green line of symmetry, which means that I can just focus on sculpting this one side of the line, and the other side of the line will update accordingly. 
Last but not least, I'll click OK to create the box. Now that the box is created, you'll see the green symmetry line still appears. And as I click on a T-spline face, the same face on the opposite side of the line appears in yellow, showing that it is also selected. Because this shape is essentially a plastic shell with an opening on one side, I want to delete some of the bottom faces to work with this as an open T-spline body. I'm going to use the view cube to look at the bottom of the body. Then, while holding down the shift key on my keyboard, I'll select the bottom six faces. And again, you'll notice they're selected on the opposite side of the symmetry line. To get rid of these faces, I'm simply going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. I'm now going to hit the finish form button in the toolbar to return to the model workspace. And if you're following along with this tutorial, then you don't have to do this step. I just wanted to quickly make you aware that when sculpting, that all we have is a surface body, meaning it has no real thickness. So we'll need to add thickness to the model later on. To return back to the sculpt environment, I'll simply double click on the form icon in the timeline. Now that I'm back in the sculpt environment, I want to round over these edges, making it look a bit more organic and less boxy. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then select all three of these edge lines. I'll then right click and select edit form. Using edit form is how you'll continue to manipulate your T-spline objects. If you're not familiar with the edit form icons, then you'll want to watch my other sculpting video where I cover what each icon means. You'll find that video by clicking the info icon in the upper right hand corner and I'll also add a link down below in the video description. I'm going to select the right face on the view cube to view this model from the right side. Then I'll click on the rotation slider and I'll drag it over to about 170 degrees. And you'll see that will push these edges in, giving them more of a curved shape. And again, take note that because I added this line of symmetry, I'm really only focused on this left side as the right side of the model is updated accordingly. One of the great things about the sculpt environment is that Fusion 360 supports copying these T-spline bodies. If I right click on the body in the Fusion 360 browser, and select copy, I can right click again in the canvas window and select the paste option. And I can drag this copied form over to the right, which means that you're not locked into one single design. You can make copies as you're working with sculpted bodies to try out a number of different design ideas while working in parallel with one another. I now want to make the corners on each end more rounded. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'll select the two edge lines where the faces converge at the corners. And I'll be sure to select them on the left side as well. Then I'll right click and select edit form and I'm going to look at the model from the top view. I'm going to select the single direction scaling icon, which is the straight vertical line and I'm going to click and drag until I like the rounded appearance, and then I'll click OK. If I wanted to, I could use this copied T-spline to create another version that's different. I'll select those same edges and select Edit Form once again. And this time, I won't drag the single directional scaling icon quite as far. As I mentioned earlier, we just have a thin surface body with no real thickness to it. And there are a few routes that we can take to try to solve this. Under the Modify dropdown list within the Sculpt environment, you'll see that there is a Thicken command. First, I'll have to select the body. And I'm going to go with the first body here, so for now, I'll turn off the second body. Then, I'll use the view cube to look at the bottom of the model. 
Now this thicken command lets you drag the blue directional arrow in the direction that you want the surface to thicken to. You can also type out a dimension in the dialog box. I'll type out negative three millimeters and the negative symbol ensures that the body will thicken to the inside of the selected body. The benefit of using this thicken tool is that this will actually create a series of parallel faces on the inside of the selected object, which means that you can modify the faces on the inside of your plastic parts as well. This can be really helpful if you have a very complicated outside and want to simplify the inside or vice versa. You can also have the thickness type be sharp, which will create a flat transition between the outside and the inside on the edge of the model. A soft transition will create a rounded shape from the outside face to the inside face. Or you can say no edge, which will create the inside faces without connecting them to the outside edge. Now the downside to using this thicken command is that it's not parametric, meaning you won't be able to easily change this thickness later down the road. Because I want to 3D print this model, I want to be able to easily change the thickness should I need to. I'm going to hit cancel for this thickness command and select finish form in the toolbar. Then back in the model workspace, I'll select the thicken command from the create dropdown list. This thicken command will be parametric. I'll type out negative three millimeters and click OK. And you'll see it created a third body in the Fusion 360 browser. This one is a fully solid and watertight body. I can now take this solid body and use the modeling tools to further modify it. With most plastic parts, the inside is typically the most complex. Let's take a look at adding some vents or webs to the side of the plastic shell so the sound waves of the doorbell chime can actually travel outside of the box. In part two, which I'll link to in the description below, we'll take a look at adding some webs, some internal ribs, and we'll discuss a few other important things to consider when designing for plastic parts. If you stuck around to the end, then drop a comment below if you learned a thing or two about sculpting in this video, which will help me decide if I should create more sculpting tutorials. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch part two, then be sure to click right now on the video in the upper right hand corner. If you're new to the channel, then be sure to hit that red subscribe button and click that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.